Number 25, dissolving 3.0 grams of calcium chloride, which is CaCl2, in 150.0 grams of water in a calorimeter, as shown in figure 5.12, which I put over here, at 22.4 degrees Celsius, causes the temperature to rise to 25.8 degrees Celsius. What is the approximate amount of heat involved in the dissolution, assuming that the specific heat of the resulting solution is 4.18 uh, joules per grams degree Celsius. And then they ask, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Okay, beautiful. So I put the figure over here. This little uh, coffee cup calorimeter, aka a simple calorimeter, you might have seen this when you did uh, like a heat transfer lab in your chemistry class. Um, we use these types of calorimeters uh, to make sure that there are no, basically that there's no heat that is being lost and that all heat that's being transferred between the two things that's going on in here is all transferred and nothing is lost. Since this is the case, we can do easy calculations to figure out the answers that they want. Now, do we really care about what this looks like, you know, honestly? And, you know, do we need it to figure out this problem? Absolutely not. So let's pay, let's pay no attention. And let's pay no attention that we can just get rid of it. <laughs> Okay, beautiful. Now, the things that are more important here are the numbers, right? And what they're telling me. Basically, we're, we have water and we have something being added into the water. In this case, it's, it's an ionic compound. It's calcium chloride. Now, we've done tons of problems. If you guys have been on the calorimetry playlist, if you guys have been working through the chapter with me, the chances are we've been seeing metals being dropped into water. But this now is an ionic compound with water. So these are solution questions, and these are actually easier than the metal ones. So that's pretty good. They also said that it's a solution because they said that the specific heat of the solution was 4.184. So with these types of questions, we're going to be using the formula of this one, Q equals MS delta T. We're going back to the original, all right? Now, they want us to approximate the amount of heat, and the heat is Q. So that means that I should know the other three components. Now, with this, guys, the mass, right, is the total mass of the whole entire solution. The whole entire solution was when we added 3.0 grams of the calcium chloride to the 150 grams of the water. So the mass is going to be the addition between the 3.0 uh, grams of the CaCl2 plus the 150 grams of the water. So what is that? One, 153, we'll say. 153.0 grams total. Now they told us that the specific heat of the resulting solution is 4.184, so, or actually just 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And now let's just find out that delta T, they did tell us that it was starting off at 22.4 degrees Celsius and it's rising to 25.8 degrees Celsius. So if I do my final temp minus initial temp, which is what delta T equals, my final temp was 25.8 degrees Celsius minus 22.4 degrees Celsius. So whatever that delta T is, let's see, 25, 25.8 minus 22.4, I get 3.4. And maybe I'll put this at the bottom here. So this equals 3.4 degrees Celsius, that's my delta T. All right, I'm ready to plug in the numbers, let's see. Q equals my total mass, which was 153, times the 4.18 times the 3.4. Pretty simple enough, right guys? 153 times 4.18 times 3.4. And I see two sig figs. Um, I, guess we'll, I guess we'll do two sig figs. So this would be 2200 joules. Now, since this is a big number, maybe we will convert to kilojoules. 
So how do we go from joules to kilojoules? We just have to divide by 1,000. So that's a little quick conversion. So this would be the same thing as saying 2.2 kilojoules. Okay. Now, when you're doing solution information and you're doing your, you're finding your Q with solution, you know, uh, ma uh, masses and specific heats, just know that this is the solution heat amount, which was 2.2 kilojoules. They're always going to want to know what happened to the reaction, not what's happening to the outside solution. So there's a thing that we just have to remember, guys. It's kind of like systems versus surroundings. The Q of the solution is always equal to the negative Q of what's actually going on in the reaction. We found out how much is going on with the, like, the surroundings. It's absorbing 2.2 kilojoules. Well, what does that mean in terms of the actual reaction? The actual reaction would just be the negative of this, and that's what they're asking for. So the Q of the reaction would be a negative 2.2 kilojoules. It is losing 2,200 joules, or 2.2 kilojoules. Now we can answer the question, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Since I see that I have a negative here, this is exothermic. Exothermic means that you lost heat. So you will be losing 2.2 uh, kilojoules. And who's picking, up, picking it up? The solution. So there's a transfer there. If this number was positive, then this would be endothermic. But that's it. So we got negative 2.2 kilojoules, and that's exothermic. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped, guys, okay? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. That will help us out a lot, and I thank you so much for that. Let's keep working hard, and good luck on all your future tests and quizzes. I will see you in future lessons. Bye-bye.